Is this your home? Yes. <sighs> What's with you all of a sudden? Being all polite and inviting it's over? Ah, you're back. Quick, come help me see if this painting's all straightened. Uh, and... Huh? Who are they? Stop making a fuss. They're obviously guests. You're not from the Academia, are you? I'm unsure she's seen you before. <gasps> You're the person from that time in that one place! Wait, what? How do you know me? Oh no, oh no, do people know that I live here? What? You're embarrassed only now of all times? Oh, you guys are roommates! Yes, yes we are, but keep that to yourselves. Please, don't tell anyone else. I keep a few books on collectives and the subconscious here at home. I'll get them. You all chat in the meantime. Uh, hey! Hey! You're leaving just like that? What's the deal, I'll hate them? Uh... <laughs> uh... Sorry, I know we've only just met, but I have to ask. Are you, um... You wouldn't happen to be actors that I'll hate them hire to pretend to be his friends, would you? Uh... what? Guess not. I've never seen him invite friends home before, so please excuse my surprise. You guys get it, right? You know, with his temperament and stuff. But aren't you his friend? Uh, I wouldn't say friends, exactly. Okay, well, we used to be. But we're not anymore. Huh? Don't worry about it. My name is Kave. I'm sorry to have met you under these circumstances. Anyway, please don't say anything about me living here. You seem like you got a lot going on. So maybe Samora will make Paimon shut up. Are you serious? How could you... Oh, of course. You're all Haytham's friends. You exposed your own weakness! Still, why do you have to treat me like he does? Judging by the deafening din coming from the living room, you all must be getting along quite well. Hmm. Entertain your own friends, why don't you? I'll leave the books here. Paimon's dizzy from reading. This is way too complicated. Why don't we just ask questions instead? Paimon wants to know... Uh... Oh, how did you know about the collective consciousness's weakness? A year ago, Siraj presented his thesis to the Grand Sage, who offhandedly asked for my opinion. I actually responded with two lines of reasoning. The first, as I've already said, was that his research was on human evolution, a subject prohibited by the academia. The second was that I thought the direction of his research was too extreme, but his approach too conservative. Wait, that's too conservative? He built such a large lab, gathered all those people, and even tried to get rid of you! One way to stabilize a collective consciousness is to remove the test subject's humanity altogether. The optimal solution to achieve collective consciousness is to focus solely on the overmind and treat the other test subjects as tools. That's way too dangerous! You're not seriously considering that, are you? Cause, uh... I'm merely stating the facts. If Siraj had done that, I would have felt his work to be just as senseless. It's impossible for any species to evolve overnight, and humans without their humanity cannot be called humans. That's why the academia prohibited research into human evolution. Most research of this kind tends to run contrary to evolution. Huh. Paimon gets it now. Ha! <laughs> That's rich coming from you. If humans aren't humans without their humanity, then you'll probably evolve into some other species in another decade, I wager. What about you? Are you going to devolve into a fungus? At least I'd be a fungus with empathy. Sorry for eavesdropping, but what happened to you guys? 
Are you in trouble? Sort of. We encountered a strange researcher that had it out for us. Are you all okay? Huh. So that's how things went. Ah, <sighs> such is life. If only he'd known, Alhatham could have stayed indoors today, and the whole thing could have been avoided, right? Plus, he could have helped me with the housework for once. See those books? They've been sitting there waiting for someone to sort through them for an age. If you're not gonna read them, tidy them away! They don't belong there! Uh... Uh... <sighs> Can you feel the awkwardness in the air? I hope you're aware of your lack of conversational skills. Oh, so the pot's calling the kettle black, is he? Hm. Well, having said all that, are you okay? I'm doing quite well. Much better than that painting you're trying to hang on the wall. You... You don't understand anything! Stop criticizing my taste in decoration! Paimon can't tell which of them is more problematic. <sighs> Let's just get this over with and leave. You whisper very loudly. Oh, um, yeah, Paimon's been told that. Do you have any more questions? Let Paimon think. Uh, oh, by the way, the other researchers apologize to you. They hope that you can forgive them. I bear them no ill will. More accurately, I don't really care about what they think of me. To some extent, they were also fooled by Siraj. The Matra will take this into account at their trials. Ilyas also said that he wanted to tell us the truth at Gundarvaville, but he didn't have the courage. He apologized to you too. It doesn't matter. I never considered asking him to come forward with the truth. Judging from his experiences, he's more courageous than the average person. There's no need to lay even more criticism on him. Criticizing the brave only shows how weak you yourself are. I'm going for dinner in ten minutes, so I'll field one last question. Paimon doesn't have any more questions. How about you? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. You only started investigating with the Matra at the Academia because you were interested in something, right? But after meeting Siraj, it didn't seem like you were interested in him or his experiment. I had no interest in him personally, but I was curious as to why so many people were willing to form a collective consciousness with him. I now understand the reason. Correct. The fall of the sages and the shutdown of the Akasha terminals deeply affected the academia. The fact that Siraj's project attracted so much interest despite not being approved speaks to the lack of research projects as of late. As the acting Grand Sage, I'll have to figure something out. In addition, what happened to Ilyas is worth our attention. Reporting academic fraud was the right thing to do. He didn't deserve the outcome that he had received. Paimon understands now. Oh, you're pretty serious when it comes to work, huh? I think minimum viable seriousness is a more apt description. I'll do my best to take care of this mess until my resignation is approved. Wait, your resignation? Yes. I've already submitted my resignation to the Academia. Soon, I'll resign as the Acting Grand Sage and go back to being its scribe. I don't think Siraj knew about that. If he had waited just a few more days before acting, I would have already resigned. What he'd do then wouldn't have been any concern of mine. However, even without my input, his unstable model would have collapsed for some other reason, so it makes no difference. But why do you want to resign? I'm not suited to be a sage, nor do I want to be one. The official process to select the new sages is already underway, but this process is long and takes far too much time. If I serve as acting Grand Sage for too long, the position might become permanent. That would be troublesome. This job isn't something I want to spend the rest of my life doing. It's important to keep your priorities straight. Well, it's about time. You two should grab some dinner as well. Oh, now that you say that, Paimon's kinda hungry. See ya! We're gonna grab some yummies! 
See ya. The name Siraj doesn't ring a bell. Was he in your class? He isn't someone who would leave an impression, so it's expected that you don't remember him. I've always had a hard time appreciating the way that the Academia pressures people by labeling them as geniuses. But even so, the Academia can't be left to you. Or perhaps I should say that I'm delighted to see that you have a base amount of self-awareness. If the people in the Academia haven't gone mad, they'd know that I'm much more suited to be a sage than you. And I suppose they'd let everyone know that your career as a sage will be as shaky as that painting. Again, that's mighty rich coming from someone about to resign. In a few days, you'll be managing files again. You'll be back at rock bottom. But my salary will likely stay the same. Wait, what? How come? Why do you get special treatment? At least I don't have to be an architectural designer who works himself to death just to get a smile from his client. Y you I took time out of my day to clean the living room for you, and this is the thanks I get for it? I'd have been better off catching up on my work! I still have designs to finish. Make sure to pay back the rent you owe me. I'm going to buy some furniture with that, Mora. What? Are you trying to annoy me to death? The decorations you buy keep getting uglier and uglier! What's the point of having a boring wood carving in your house? You'll have to blame that on my financial freedom. Fine! Go ahead and hide behind your financial success if you want. But if we forget Mora for a second, do you have anything of true value to boast about? I think I'd have too many choices, to be honest. You, on the other hand, can you think of any redeeming features at all? Artistry, for sure! You don't know the first thing about interior design. Don't go off buying random furniture unless you take me with you. So I'll have to bring you along and then buy you drinks? Of course! But why would I do that? It would just be another form of a loan, and you'd have to pay me back eventually. Can't you just be nice and not ask for the Mora back? Pretending that you're not in debt is as ridiculous as pretending you're not living in someone else's home. Word will get out sooner or later. Speaking of which, your friends won't say anything, right? Tell them to keep all this a secret. There's no need to hide it so carefully. I think the truth's already out. You're such a lightweight that a few drinks at the tavern had you spilling all your beans. What? No, it can't be.